everyone! Today we are going to build three YouTube manometers that will help us determine the velocity of the air stream coming out of a hair dryer. But let's first define what a YouTube manometer is. A YouTube manometer is a pressure measuring instrument that is known for its accuracy and its operational simplicity. It doesn't require any sort of calibration and it doesn't consist of any moving parts, which makes it widely used nowadays even though it is considered to be one of the earliest measuring devices. Using simple materials as shown, and which can be found in almost every household, we are going to build our manometers using three different size of tubes with inner diameters of 5 16th, 3 16th, and 1 8th of an inch. But you can use any size you might have available. And since we are going to use water, it's a good idea to use food colorants of your choice to make water displacement visible. Revlon hair dryer is the device to which we are going to be measuring its air speed and to which we already know it produces velocities ranging from 17.88 meter per second to 35.76 meter per second. Using a white wood board as shown, each plastic tube was bent into a U-shape and then fixed onto the white board using glue. We used tape to securely fix the tubes onto the white board while waiting for the used glue to harden, and we put it aside for around 30 minutes before we proceeded with our experiment. Here's the final look of our homemade measuring device. Since there's no way of connecting the tubes to the hair dryer, we built a cap that will facilitate the connection with as minimum loss as possible of air getting out. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using three food colorants, yellow, black, and red. The fluid that we're going to be using for our monometer is water. And we're going to be using two drops of each food colorant in each cup. One, two. And we're going to do the same thing for the black colorant. One, two drops. Same thing for the red colorant, which is the last one. Two drops again. One and two. Now that we are ready, we are going to use a syringe to get the colored water into the tubes. Um, we'll start with a small tube. We won't be specific when it comes to how much water we take in terms of volume. That way we'll be able to investigate if the size of the tubes as well as the volume of the liquid used does or does not affect our results and the functionality of the manometer. We just have to be a little bit careful not to overfill the tubes and get enough water into the tubes as can be seen. And then we're going to do the same thing, use a syringe, get water, the black one, and fill the large tube. And you can see that we used less water. Well, since we're going to be using a larger tube, it makes more sense that we're going to need more water, not less, compared to the first one. Again, we don't have to worry about the volume. Let's just try and get enough water into each tube. Again, let's go and do the same thing for the last tube. Get some water using the syringe. And put enough into the tube. Oops, I definitely overfilled that one. Now that we have our three distinct manometers ready, uh, let's go ahead and mark the height of the liquids onto the board. That will help us later when we try to measure the displacement of water. Now we are ready to start connecting each of our manometers to the hair dryer using the cap we made. Um, it's going to be easier to just plug in, in the tubes into that cap and then plug it again to the hair dryer as shown. 
Now we're gonna start with the smallest manometer that has the smallest tube. That way we'll be enlarging that hole in the cap as we go from the smallest to largest. And then we're gonna connect the hair dryer. We are gonna make sure that it's connected to the power as well before we proceed. Uh, let's get a little bit closer, that way you will be able to see what's going on once I turn on the hair dryer. Perfect. The air stream is now being blown onto the tube and a high difference of water between the right and the left side of the device was noticed. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the medium sized tube manometer. And let's go ahead and mark the height of the liquid. Uh, it might seem a little bit redundant, but we will have to do the same again with the manometer having the largest tube. And we're going to go ahead and mark the height difference of water, which is also known as the differential pressure. It is worth mentioning that the steps taken to measure the height differences were performed five times for each of the bell devices. For each trial, we mark the initial height and the final height for each of the manometers. And just by eyeballing it, it seems like the differential height is almost the same in all of them. The height difference of water was measured using a ruler with millimeter scale for each trial. The manometer with the medium tube size gave an average height difference of 4.075 centimeters. The small one gave an average difference of 4.3 centimeters and the last one gave a difference of 4.25 centimeters. Since the heights were the same, or almost the same, the calculated velocities were also almost the same. This one resulted in a velocity of 25.91 meter per second, this one in 26.61 meter per second, and the last one resulted in a velocity of 26.46 meter per second. The question now is, how did we get the values of these stated velocities? Well, no worries, it's simpler than it looks. Bernoulli's equation got us covered. This equation was used to find V2, which is what we are looking for. Since gravity was neglected in this experiment, the equation was rearranged and simplified to what is shown. P2 can be found using the principles of fluid statics using the following formulas. And since the air coming out of the hair dryer was at atmospheric pressure, this results in letting P1 equal to P0. Now, by substituting P2 back into the original Bernoulli's equation, we'll only have and end up with one unknown, which is V1. It is worth mentioning that V2 is equal to zero since it represents the velocity of the air stream when it reached water in the tube. That is why it was not shown on the above equation. Rho A is the density of the air, which can be calculated using the shown equation. To sum up, this experiment confirmed how building a U-tube manometer was as simple as bending a long plastic tube into a U-shape. It has also proven that regardless of the size of the inner diameter, the differential pressure is going to be the same. Also, since the velocity of the air produced by the hair dryer was determined to be approximately 26 meters per second, which did fall within the expected range of values, we can say and conclude that each of our fabricated YouTube manometer did offer a good accuracy and sensitivity as expected. Hopefully, this video helped you understand how YouTube manometers works and how useful they can be. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.